The buzz they bring is completely different, but it turns out coffee and wine have a lot in common. Wine has a long tradition of talking about varietals, regions, flavors. Is the same thing happening in coffee? People are paying more attention to what does something actually taste like? What is the experience associated with it? Rather than just getting that buzz, right? <laughs> to find out how these two ubiquitous beverages are bosom buddies, we spoke to Andrew Robertson, director of retail for Press Coffee Roastery. For starters, coffee beans are like wine grapes. Describe how like grapes, mm. where the bean grows matter. Does soil matter? Does the farmer matter? It really, really does. So all of that makeup of weather, elevation, soil content, varietal, the practices of the farmer all contribute to the final product. Coffee beans are scored in a similar way that wines are scored. Was it picked ripe? What's the acidity, moisture content? And about a hundred variables are assessed. Given a score between zero and 100, if it's 80 points or higher, specialty grade coffee. He says every two or three weeks, they receive a new crop of beans. Next year, there's a good chance we won't have any of the same coffees we bought this year because year to year or vintage to vintage, traits and characteristics vary a lot. The vintage of the bean and where it comes from year to year determine the flavor characteristics. And so we don't just have like the Guatemalan, we might have a Guatemalan hudapu. Once it's out for this year, it's gone forever. Next, roasting and fermentation are similar. This is the raw agricultural product that's being exported all around the world. There's a big variance from bag to bag, crop to crop, on what the quality of this coffee actually is. I've never smelled pre-roasted coffee. It almost has sweetness to it. Yeah, I, a lot of times it smells like sweet tart. The processing method is gonna determine a lot of that smell, whether it's light and honey and floral, or big and gamey and fruity. This is similar to the wine fermentation process, and he says the ideal temp to roast beans is up to about 400 degrees. We stop way before that because we're not looking for those bitter burner hashy notes. You don't want to taste the roast. You want to taste the varieta. Exactly. Finally, the tasting notes. Just like a Pinot Noir is a light bodied red wine, washed Ethiopian is a light bodied coffee. So a lighter bodied honey, yep. tea like. This is a Latin American. We generally expect more traditional chocolatey flavors in these. This one has a little more acid. We call that brightness in the coffee industry. Until you do this and get it side by side, it's hard to tell how much variety matters. That's right. You're feeding my addiction. You understand this. You're an enabler. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> From coffee to Cabernet, we're finding common ground.